Good morning, everyone. Uh, it is a great privilege to be standing in front of you again. Thank you so much, Amsterdam Church, for just giving me opportunity to, to be sharing with you again what the, what the cross and the crucifixion of Jesus Christ means specifically for me at this present time in my life. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tom. I'm going to be 25 in like, uh, what is it, two days? And uh, I have a beautiful wife uh, somewhere in the audience. I can't find her right now. Oh, there she is. And, uh, and she's the mother of two uh, uh, amazing two boys. One is on the way. And, uh, and uh, I've been through some great journey of life. I've been a disciple for almost three years now, and it's been a great journey. And I'd like to share a little bit more about how this journey was for me and uh, what I'm learning at specific this, specifically at this time of my life. Uh, so I'm going to share a scripture in John 18. It says from verse 36. Uh, and this is Jesus speaking to Pilate. It says, Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You're a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You say that I'm a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the, on the side of truth, listen to me. What is truth? And uh, once again, it's a great privilege to be speaking to you. Uh, what, um, what we're looking at uh, right now in the scripture is Jesus is going through a trial. He's been, uh, he's been investigated by this man uh, called Pilate. And, uh, and, um, and he was very quiet throughout the whole, uh, throughout the whole trial except a few points. And I believe that every single one of these points has one focus. And that's really what my communion is about today. And what cross means for me, it means just one more Lord, just one more soul Lord. And that really uh, speaks to me, even looking at Pilate, because Pilate is the man who's in charge of a great area in Israel. And he, he's, been, uh, uh, he's been investigating Jesus and Jesus is speaking to him about two things, kingdom and truth. And why is he speaking to him about this? Because he wants to save him. He is being investigated and, and Pilate has his life and, and death in his hands, yet Jesus doesn't care about it. There's hundreds of people outside of that place who are screaming, crucify him, crucify him. Yet the only thing that Jesus has in mind is, how can I save this man? What can I say to this man to save him? And even though we don't know if Pilate made it, uh, we know that his wife, according to tradition, became a disciple. Wow. And this is not the only case, because just shortly after, we see Jesus being tortured. He, he, he's ripped off his skin on his back. He gets this cross. He's humiliated, stripped naked in front of like hundreds of people. He carries this cross up until the point where he cannot carry it anymore. And guess what happened? Uh, there's a Simon of Cyrene. Again, a man that just came to his life. Jesus is in, almost at a point of just being exhausted to the point of death. Yet, what is on his mind is, how can I share the gospel with Simon of Cyrene? Again, we don't know if he made it, but we know that his two sons made it and became a disciples because the Bible speaks about it. And this is not all. Because the later on, Jesus is getting pierced. He has like thick nails in his wrist. He's bleeding out. Yet again, there are people around him shouting at him, screaming, laughing, yet he has only one focus. How can I save this criminal that is by my right side? And, he's, and he speaks to him with his last words. And, and, uh, and a criminal on the cross that we don't even know his name, he's again, he's saved by Jesus in a tremendous torture that he's going through right now. And, and just these scenarios alone, looking at the last 24 hours of Jesus and what he went through and what was his focus got me thinking, what about me? You know, when Jesus was so focused on, on just seeking and saving the lost, seeking that one more soul, Lord. I bet that at these moments, he was going through a tremendous pain, but he was like, Lord, just give me one more soul. God, just please one more. Make this painful journey be more, even more effective, even just one more, just one more person, please, Lord. 
And, uh, and it brought me back to when I was becoming a, a Christian. It was about three years ago. And I couldn't cry. And even till this very day, I find it really difficult to cry. I cry very, very rarely. But, uh, but I said something to God at that day. I said, I couldn't cry. Even the day before my baptism, I couldn't cry. But I was like, God, I cannot be emotional right now, but I want to show you. I want to prove you how much I value your cross, how much I value what you did for me. And I made a decision back then that I'll do anything and go anywhere just to, just to show appreciation for the cross. But I'm far not Jesus. I'm by far not where Jesus is. Because when I look at my life, even though I try to really always seek for people who don't know yet God or who don't know yet the, the Bible and what it says to them, but I fall so short uh, of uh, Jesus' example. I can, where, where Jesus is saying, just one more Lord, I'm saying, just leave me alone, Lord, when I'm going through trials. When I'm going through weakness, I want to be alone. I don't want to give to people. That's not me naturally. And I'm really seeing and being just super convicted by the example of Jesus, that when he was at the worst point of his life, he would always give, always give, always give. And I'm just reminding them, one, I'm one of these souls. I'm one of these souls that Jesus was, when he was going through that pain, that he was thinking also of me, that he was thinking of, yeah, there'll be Tom 2,000 years later from now, that he will be addicted to pornography, that he will have all these impure relationships, that will, he, will, he won't deserve what I have for him, but just please, one more soul, Lord. And, and I'm, I'm dedicated now. I, I really want, I dedicated my entire life to this, I really want to beg God every single day, just one more soul, Lord. And it gives me so much joy to see now Reuben and Lisa, a man, man and woman of great faith. And I can imagine what is going on right now in heaven. I can just imagine. And Jesus is looking down and just one more, just two more souls, Lord. And he's looking down. But the question that I already have in my heart is like, who's going to be next, Lord? Who's that next soul for whom you died? And maybe you're sitting in this room today and you're thinking, man, I'm too bad to be a Christian. I've done some horrible things. Well, let me tell you, probably you know worse than Pilate was or than this criminal on the cross or me. You probably haven't done worse things than all three of these men. But yet Jesus is, doesn't care about it. He cares about just one more soul, Lord. And that's really what cross means for me today. It really means that Jesus would do anything just to save one more soul, just to bring one more sheep home. And I want all of us just to remember that today as we take uh, uh, bread and wine, just to remember that Jesus also died for me. And maybe I don't even believe him. Maybe I'm not a Christian yet, but Jesus died for me. And he had me in, in his mind and saying, just one more, Lord. Let's pray with this in mind. Um, Father God, thank you for... Uh, for just uh, the whole process of what you went through, Father, that uh, how much you showed me love, Father, uh, how much you showed to these men and women, Father, in this building, Father, love, that you've been, uh, you've been willing and able, Father, to, uh, to send your son, Father, down to the earth, and that uh, you, you saw him being tortured and humiliated, Father, yet you wouldn't intercede, you wouldn't come there, Father, just so we can be saved, Father. And I pray, Father, as we take bread and wine today, Father, I pray that we can remember that we're no, not no one's, Father, but that we're someone's. That we're, we're someone, Father, that you've been thinking when you were sending your son. That Jesus was thinking when he had these this thick uh, nails just uh, going through his uh, wrists, Father, and he was bleeding out. He was thinking of our soul, and he was doing it for us, Father. I pray that we can remember it today and be grateful, forever grateful to you, Father. I pray all of this in your son's name, Jesus. Amen.